So now that we have a basic understanding of routing and how to use controllers within Adonis, we can start to take a look at some database integration. So today we're going to be going over how to install Lucid, which is Adonis's ORM, as well as how to get our project communicating with a MySQL database. So even though we'll be focusing on MySQL throughout this series, it's worth noting that you can also use a myriad of other SQL based databases within your project. Okay, so first off, we're going to want to head into our terminal and install Lucid within our project. So the way that we'll go about this is npmi at adonisjs slash lucid, and we'll want to install the alpha version. So we'll at alpha, go ahead and hit enter on that. Okay, and then now that Lucid is installed, we can go ahead and invoke it, which will essentially register it within our project. And then it will also spit back some ENV configuration changes that we need to make. So let's go ahead and run node ace invoke at Adonis JS slash Lucid, hit enter on that. Okay, and then now it's gonna ask us which database driver we're gonna be using, and I'll be using MySQL. However, if you're using any of these others, feel free to select those. Adonis will then spit back the appropriate changes that you'll need to make within your project for that selection. I also wanna make a note that if you do not have a SQL-based database installed locally on your machine, and that's something that you're not prepared to do, you can use an external service like Redshift or Elephant SQL to get a database quickly up and running so that you can test with. I believe Elephant SQL has a free tier as well so that you can just mess around with things as you need. So that is an option as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit enter on our database driver selection. Next up, Adonis is going to spit back some instructions to us and it's gonna ask us which way we want those to be spit back to us, either in the browser or in the terminal. In the terminal will work all right. Okay, and then Adonis will now spit back to us some ENV TypeScript definition changes that we need to make. So these are within the env.ts file. So we can go ahead and copy the selection that we chose for our database driver. I chose my SQL, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy these. If you selected one of the others, go ahead and copy the definition for the selection that you made. Let's head into our project down to the env.ts file. And then just down at the end, we can paste these in. Give that a save. And one thing that invoking Lucid did for us is within our EMV file, it actually plopped some default environment variables for those TypeScript definitions that we just pasted into our EMV.ts file. So we'll be changing these here in a minute. Okay, so now we have Lucid installed and configured within our project. So we're ready to go on that front. Now we need a database to work with. So next up, let's go ahead and create a MySQL database that we can work with. So let's head back into our terminal. I'm going to clear that out and let's head into MySQL. Okay, there we go. I had to get my password right. So let's go ahead and create database and we'll just call this Adonis5. Let's create that and we can exit out of MySQL. Go ahead and clean that up as well. And now within our env file, we'll want to adjust the user. I am just using roots. We need to type in the password for that user as well as the database name that we just created, which was Adonis5. So we should be able to go ahead and save this. If you're using a database as a service, it's likely that they provided a user, a password, and a database name for you. You're also going to need to update the host and the port that they provide to you as well. So now one quick note that I wanna make here is that Adonis is reading these environment variables within our configuration, and we have a particular configuration for our database integration. So if we select database within our configuration directory and we scroll down just a smidge, we should see the connection definition for the database driver selection that we chose. So for example, I have MySQL. And then you can see here that for the variables that it's using for its connection are coming straight from our environment. So this is really where Adonis is making the connection with which database driver we're using via the database connection, in addition to how it's communicating with our database. Okay, and then to round out this video, I just wanna make note that we have a couple of new ACE commands. So if we run node ACE and print out the options that we have available to us. So you'll see we have a couple of new commands within our make section. We can now make migrations, we can make models, and I believe Cedar is also new as well. So migrations are how we're going to go about creating new tables, adding columns to that table, adding types to those columns, whether or not they can be nullable. Really anything that is changing our database is going to be within a migration. A model is the Lucid ORM integration for our database tables. So essentially within models, we're going to be defining what the table the model represents, looks like in the database, any columns it has, the types of those columns, any relationships that the uh, table might have, 
And in addition to that, we can add computed and on the fly properties in addition to some hooks. So if we want to do something before we save a file or update a file, we could do that within the model as well. And then seeders are something that we can use to pre-populate our database tables with static information. So say maybe we always want roles defined in a particular way. We could define those roles within our seeder and then we can run the seeder whenever we initially create our roles table to pre-populate the roles table with those roles defined within our seeder. And then lastly here, we'll see a whole new section called migration. This is the different commands that we can run for our migration files. Run is going to run any pending migration. So any migrations that Adonis has not registered already within our database. Rollback is going to allow us to go back either one or an X defined amount of migration runs. So essentially, whenever we run our migrations, Adonis is going to have a table within our database that it keeps track of how our migrations have been run. And every time that we run a new migration, that's going to increment a run count. And using that run count, we can define how many runs we want to roll back our migrations. So essentially, roll back is going to undo previous runs that we did. So say we created a user table on run one, if we roll back that change, our users table will be deleted from our database. Or if we're altering our table in our migration, it will remove any columns that we defined as well. And that'll make more sense whenever we actually run through it in the next lesson. So now that we actually have Lucid installed and configured and we assume appropriately communicating with our database, we'll be putting that to the test in the next lesson by going over how to create migrations and use migrations so that we can actually see some changes happen within our database itself.